Hey guys, welcome back to the ranch. My name is Rob and I'm going to be your garden tour guide for today. Today is June 3rd and this is my weekly update on my Mitlider garden. I've grown this garden all by myself with zero experience and I started way back in January I do believe and if you want to see how I got to this point I'll leave a link to my garden series at the end of this video. So stick around to the end, follow that link, and you can see every step of the way what I've done to accomplish this. So let's get started. All right, we're gonna start on this end as we always do. And this right here is my carrot bed. This is the only vegetable I got left in this grow bed. And um, I'm getting ready to harvest these carrots and I'm going to turn over this bed uh, rejuvenate it with some mulch you see in the wheelbarrow there and uh, some fertilizer and then I'm going to plant sweet potatoes follow along uh, this week in my on my channel I'll be posting my sweet potato uh, planting guide but for now um, let's look at the carrots see what we've harvested or see what we can harvest from the carrot bed there we go. There's a carrot. Couple more carrots. Some decent carrots. I'm pretty happy. These things have been in the ground since March, I believe, and this is June 3rd, so I think I planted these March 15th. You know, they're a little crooked here, uh, but I'm surprised they're not, you know, they're not doing too bad in this heat. Okay, I'll finish harvesting these carrots later today, and uh, I'm going to prep this bed for my sweet potatoes. Let's go over my tomatoes. Now, I have really become discouraged with tomatoes even though these plants look beautiful strong very little disease um, I thought they were insect free for a while but they're not they have been several weeks now green tomatoes I just started getting a couple of hints of pink and red and every single tomato that has any indication of being ripe has insect damage or rot damage something like this so I don't know what I'm doing wrong or if anything but uh, I'm very discouraged with my tomatoes so far I've not got one single ripe tomato off my my tomato plants you can see there's plenty of green tomatoes here plenty of green tomatoes and it seems like every time one gets close to becoming ripe I've got damage so somebody please in the comments if you have any insight to what's going on here why it's happening to me give me some feedback i don't know what else to do you can see here's a perfectly green healthy tomato with a wormhole um, i mean i'm just really discouraged about all the tomatoes that i'm getting damage and you can see right here i've harvested about seven or eight tomatoes that all have damage every single one so give me some feedback on that on the other hand peppers must be my thing i've got so many peppers here all kinds of banana peppers jalapeno peppers bell peppers i mean look in there look at my peppers every one of these plants is loaded with peppers and I have harvested so many so many banana peppers that I'm just uh, overloaded with them giving them away making pickled peppers eating them fresh every day and it looks like there's a lot more peppers in my future so I mean look at that real happy with my peppers 
every plant is loaded. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna be successful with this, but I'm gonna try, if, unless somebody tells me it's impossible, I'm gonna try to overwinter these peppers because I know these are perennial plants and I've heard that you can overwinter them in the south. I'm pretty far south, I'm in North Texas. Um, I think I can use my grow bed here with my side supports to build a, a shelter over these plants and, uh, and keep them for the winter. That's my plan. So we'll see how that goes. All right. Let's look at my indeterminate tomato plants. A lot of my indeterminates are still green. Well, all of them are still green. I've got a couple that once they turn pink, like this one, have some kind of damage. Every one, I've got two inside that have a little bit of damage and they're starting to pinken up, but it's just really discouraging. All varieties are same. I've got three different varieties out here. Red snapper, determinate. These are mortgage lifter indeterminate. And I've got cherry red indeterminates. And, oh, here's a pink one. Yep, and as I thought, as soon as it turns pink, there's damage. Some of the green ones even have damage already. So um, before this started happening, I picked a few green ones. Somebody told me I can ripen these up inside on the counter and I've done that. I put five of my biggest tomatoes inside in the windowsill that do not have damage, but they're still green and they've been in there for over a week and they're still very green. No sign of turning red. So feedback, anybody can help me. Please share your comments. What can I do? I'm getting discouraged. Now let's look at these. Let's see, here's a little cherry red that's starting to get orange on the bottom. Oh, that's probably the first one I've seen that has no damage that I can detect. And uh, there's another one. So hopefully uh, I'll be able to get some of these ripe tomatoes before the bugs get them all. Okay, so the watermelons are coming along. I've got four good sized melons here. And uh, I think we've got three vines. So I'm trying to keep the melons uh, restricted to one to two melons per vine. And I believe I've done that by using my, um, the Mitlider course book method of pruning and some of your suggestions. I'm gonna keep that going and I think it's doing well. Over here we got cantaloupe, same principle. I've got um, one or two melons per vine. One might, might have a couple more than, than two, but uh, these are very small ones right here. But some of them are getting up there. Um, we might have a, a fresh melon to eat pretty soon. So cantaloupes are doing well. Now birdhouse gourds, uh, they're getting so heavy, they some of them fell off of the trellis, but and some of them are not formed correctly. Like these are not bottle gourds. These are just flat gourds, so they didn't form correctly. But it looks like I've got a handful, maybe three or four that formed correctly. This one, this one, there's three, four, five. Looks like I got five or six maybe that are formed correctly, but they're uh, doing well. We'll look at the uh, tomatoes again. Um, I might have one or two orange cherry tomatoes here that are not damaged. Fingers crossed I can eat my first ripe tomato tomorrow or the next day. Okay, that's the plan. So, again, everything has turned pink so far has been damaged and uh, <clears throat> somehow I believe it's caterpillars. I believe it's these little green caterpillars that's in here and I've sprayed and done everything I thought I could do uh, with the organic spray that I have. 
I might have to resort to some stronger stuff if I can if I can't get any ripe tomatoes off of all these plants without something eating them I'm starting to get a few though that one doesn't have any damage that I can feel so I might get some off of here tomorrow we'll see cucumbers uh, producing way more than I can eat and I've already pickled uh, about I think it was six quarts or six pints I mean I made pickles there's one I forgot to pick it's got too big um, stubby little thing but the same pruning method has been working well for me over here I'm letting the watermelons uh, not water I'm letting the cucumbers grow and uh, and I'm gonna be pruning like here's some over here that one's ready to pick and I'm getting plenty, plenty of cucumbers off of, off of this four plants here, okay? Plenty of cucumbers. And I like the vertical method. I mean, they're growing up and easy to pick, um, easy to prune. All right, here we got my uh, butternut squash. I've got a couple, this one is the only real one that's, uh, and it's not even that big. I don't know how big these are supposed to get, this variety. But that one is finally starting to get hard a little bit. So, not too happy with that production. There's, seems like a lot of them die before they get ripe. But it is what it is. Um, these little pan squash here, I've gotten probably a dozen. Like here's one, look at this thing. So. Looks like that one's about ready. I'll go ahead and try to pick it. But you see what I'm dealing with here. Um, for every one that I get full size, I'm getting several of these that are not either getting uh, pollinated or dying on the vine. I'm not sure. But so far, these little pan squash are doing, you know, okay. And I got some ants again. Have to spray the orange extract on here pretty soon. Um, panty pans doing okay. Got pumpkins. Every vine has at least one fruit on it. Some of them have two. This one has two. So we'll see how that goes. That's the biggest one there. Pretty good size happy with that let's look at the blackberry patch so the blackberries I've been doing some uh, some more fertilizer I hit them with some 20-20-20 uh, water soluble down into the wicking tub and uh, seems to be producing a little bit extra growth so I'm gonna do a video next on the trellis system that I learned and uh, pruning that I've also learned. So stay tuned for that video on pruning and trellising my blackberry patch, okay? So that's it for the mitt lighter garden beds. Let's go look at the uh, potato patch and corn and experimental garden. Okay, here's my corn patch, potato patch, previously the potato patch in experimental garden so since last week i've harvested all the potatoes that were down the middle of this bed uh, there's a picture here what i've harvested i had to do it when it was a little bit wet because i was going out of town and i ended up getting i haven't weighed them yet but i think it's around 15 pounds plus the five pounds i got originally so i think i've got about 20 pounds of potatoes for uh, investment of 15 pounds of seed potatoes which is not very good so I'm not happy with that but I did get some potatoes out of it and uh, we'll make do with them and figure out what we did wrong and fix it next year so uh, the potato bed has now been taken over by my watermelons and uh, other squat I believe there's some birdhouse gourds in there like this one birdhouse gourd a couple there so also the corn, I'm just really uh, kind of tired of dealing with corn. Every every day the wind blows it over and uh, sometimes it straightens back up, but as you can see, it's kind of crooked and you know, I'll, 
I'll let it go and see what I get, but uh, not too optimistic here on the corn. These are some uh, watermelons. Um, see, like this corn. I mean, I think I should just pull that out. It's kind of a waste. Um, watermelons over here. I think I saw one little melon on this plant, but I'm just letting these grow like watermelons are supposed to grow out in the in the open. Now they got plenty of room to spread in this potato bed here. So here we got eggplant. I do believe it's eggplant. It doesn't look like some of the eggplants I've seen online were starting to get fruit or at least flowers. So we'll see what this turns into. I believe it's eggplant. We'll see. Hopefully we'll have some watermelons as well. Um, and then my red burgundy okra. Uh, starting to get some okra here. There's one, I got one, I think that got too big on me. Like that one, and this morning I came out and tried to pick this one, but it, I couldn't get it broke. I have to bring my shears out here. But that one and this one are two of the big ones and I'll come back and get those in just a little bit. But that's my red burgundy okra. So starting to produce some fruit there. Over here, we've got some melons on this vine. I see a tiny little melon down there. So we'll see right there. See how that goes. And we got some more pan and squash here. Okay. And that's the experimental garden in a nutshell. And last but not least, I got my uh, containers here, goji berries. So these are still going strong. These three really took off. That one's starting to take off. That one sprouted up. Some of them are a lot smaller, but they've got green. So goji berries are alive and well. And over here, my strawberry tower. A lot of green, no more berries. I think instead of June bearing, these should be called April bearing because April and May was when I got most of the berries off of these first year plants and uh, now they're not producing. There's one one plant here with, I think this is one of those ever bearing varieties, but the rest of them are all, all done and I'm just keeping them alive and hopefully next year we'll have a good harvest. This is one of my blackberry plants, Primark Freedom. And then this right here is something I have no idea what it is. This is a volunteer that came up and uh, I guess this pot was used for something else. And uh, if anybody can identify that, let me know. Some kind of flower, I'm sure. I don't remember what we planted in that, if anything, but volunteer. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this week's garden update. If you uh, can, give me some pointers on these tomatoes. This channel here, I'm telling you, I'm not doing any any editing out this is all real world this is reality tv i didn't edit out any of the bad stuff everything i'm doing here i'm sharing with you guys and uh, hopefully we'll all learn from it but my tomato plants i mean my tomato fruit is just giving me headaches i don't know what i should do um, getting frustrated not able to get a ripe tomato off of this crop here so um, again, real world TV, not edited, except for the part where I had to change uh, GoPro batteries because my GoPro kept overheating. But other than that, this is real life experience, what I'm dealing with. Overall though, I'm still very, very pleased with my garden this year. Being a rookie first timer, I'm happy with my successes and I've already um, harvested lots of food for the, for the kitchen and Got some in, in jars and preserved and canned. And uh, for my first year, I should not be disappointed. So I'm not. Um, just want to learn and try to get better. So thank you all for watching. Leave me some comments and feedback below. And come back next week for the, for the new uh, garden update.